Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Welcome to lecture 9 on measure and integration. As you recall, we have been looking at um, classes of subsets of a set x called semi algebra, algebra, sigma algebra and so on. And then we also looked at set functions defined on these classes with the properties. So, in particular we defined the concept of a measure. A measure is a set function defined on a collection of subsets such that the measure of mu of the empty set is equal to 0 and mu is countably additive. Today, we are going to start uh, the process uh, which is called extension uh, process. So, the topic for today's uh, discussion is going to be extensions of measures. Uh, basically, the question uh, arises um, from some properties uh, on the real line. Um, let us look at mathematically the question. We know that notion of length is defined for all intervals. So, the question is can the notion of length be extended to arbitrary subsets of the real line. That means, can we define the notion of the length for an arbitrary subset of the real line. Of course, it should be compatible with the definition of the length for the interval. So, the need for such an extension one of course, is purely a mathematical curiosity that we have the notion of length for an interval, can we define it for a arbitrary subset. Another reason which is more important is that uh, it arises from uh, um, some problems in Riemann integration. The concept of Riemann integral which is defined for uh, a class of functions uh, fails to uh, satisfy some nice properties uh, like you if if a function is uh, uh, the fundamental theorem of calculus does not hold for Riemann integrable functions. So, in order to remove those difficulties one um, started for looking for an extension of Riemann integral and that led to the problem of extending the notion of length from a class of subsets uh, that is intervals to all subsets if possible. And uh, if you are interested in looking at more details about that uh, why um, Riemann integral should be extended to a wider class of functions and how that leads to the concept of extending uh, the notion of length to arbitrary subsets. Um, read chapter 1 and 2 of the textbook that we have mentioned earlier, namely an introduction to measure and integration uh, by myself in the Kerana. So, let us uh, start with the question of what is an extension. So, let uh, C 1 and C 2 be two classes of subsets of a set x and let us assume C 1 is a subset of C 2. We have two uh, measures or two set functions mu 1 and mu 2. Mu 1 is defined on C 1 and mu 2 is defined on the collection C 2. So, mu 1 and mu 2 are set functions mu 1 defined on C 1 and mu 2 defined on C 2 with the property that mu 1 on C 1 is same as mu 2 for subsets of C 1. So, mu 1 and mu 2 agree on subsets of C 1. Recall C 1 is a sub, sub collection of C 2. So, uh, in such a case we call mu, uh, mu 2 is an extension of mu 1. So, on, on C 1 which is a smaller class mu 1 and mu 2 are same. So, uh, and mu 2 is defined on a bigger class that is C 2. So, we say C 2 uh, mu 2 is an extension of uh, uh, the measure of the set function uh, C 1. So, the problem is given a measure mu, we start with a measure mu on a semi algebra C of subsets of a set x. Um, we want to show that there exists a unique extension to a measure mu tilde on A of C the algebra generated by it. So, this is uh, going to be our uh, first uh, step of uh, extension theory namely given a measure on a semi algebra. 
uh, we are going to extend it to a measure on the uh, algebra generated by that uh, semi algebra. So, let us see how this process is carried over. So, recall that a set E in the algebra generated by a semi algebra, we had characterized such uh, sets can be given by a representation E is equal to union i 1 to n E i. So, every set in the algebra generated by a semi algebra is a finite union of sets from the semi algebra and in addition they are pairwise disjoint. So, uh, this was the result we had proved that the algebra generated by a semi algebra is nothing but all finite disjoint union of sets in the semi algebra. So, let us take uh, any set E in the uh, semi algebra. So, uh, we define mu tilde of E to be sigma i 1 to n mu of E i and the claim is that this is the unique uh, extension which we are looking for. So, let us see how do we uh, do it. So, we have got mu on C and this is a semi algebra. So, we define mu tilde on the algebra generated by C. So, this is algebra generated generated by C. So, we want to define a function here a set function which should look like an extension. So, if E belongs to f of C, then we know this set E looks like a disjoint union of element C i, i equal to 1 to n for some n C i belonging to C. Now, why we defined it the way we have defined the mu tilde? See, if mu tilde of E is going to be defined and it is going to be a measure on the algebra f of c, then we know that every measure is also finitely additive. So, by the finite additivity property of mu tilde, which we have not yet defined, but the finite additivity property will say that this should be equal to mu tilde of the union c i, i equal to 1 to n. And this being finitely additive, we should have i equal to 1 to n mu tilde of C i, but mu tilde is going to be an extension. So, that means mu tilde on C i is same as mu on C i. So, this is same as 1 to n of mu of C i. So, that actually fixes what is going to be the definition of mu tilde of E. So, if E is a finite disjoint union of elements which is C i, then mu tilde of E must be given by this and that also shows the uniqueness of uh, the definition of mu tilde. So, mu, should, mu tilde should be defined by this, it is necessary and we will show that actually this definition works also. So, let us uh, prove uh, this property that mu tilde. So, first we want to show that mu tilde is well defined. So, what does that mean? So, suppose E is a set which is in f of c, then we know that E can be written as a finite union of sets c i is finite disjoint union of sets c i in c, but it is possible it can have some other representation. So, it is possible that is also representable as j equal to 1 to m of some sets d i, where c i is belong to c and d j s also belong to uh, d j s also belong to c. So, to show then because our definition depended on the representation. So, we should show that mu of C i summation i equal to 1 to n is same as summation mu of d j, j equal to 1 to m. So, this is we should show then only we can claim uh, if we can able to show this then only we can claim that our function mu tilde i is well defined. So, let us uh, show this. So, now note because E is given by these two different representations. So, I can write union C i 
i equal to 1 to n also as union c i intersection union d j s j equal to 1 to m right. So, that is equal to sigma or oh sorry that is equal to union i equal to 1 to n union j equal to 1 to m c i intersection d j and similarly union d j s j equal to 1 to m is also representable by the same way because the two sets are same. So, it is the same representation right. So, now let us uh, compute. So, let us compute sigma mu of c i i equal to 1 to n I can write it as sigma i equal to 1 to n. Now, this mu of c i is the disjoint union of c i intersection d j that is where we are using this representation that we just now wrote j equal to 1 to m. And this is a disjoint union c i s belong to the semi algebra d j s belong to the semi algebra. So, this intersection belongs to the semi algebra and their unions is c i which is also in the semi algebra and mu is a measure on the semi algebra. So, it um, so this is also uh, finitely additive. So, it is i equal to 1 to n. So, I can write this sigma equal to j equal to 1 to m mu of c i intersection d j. Similarly, we can also write j equal to 1 to m mu of d j to be equal to this is summation j equal to 1 to m and mu of d j. So, that I can write as union of d j intersection c i, i equal to 1 to n. And now again by finite additivity property, this is j equal to 1 to m sigma i equal to 1 to n mu of d j intersection c i. So, look at this equation 1, look at this equation 2, 1 and 2 imply that sigma i equal to 1 to n mu of c i is equal to sigma j equal to 1 to m mu of d j. So, that says, so implies mu is well defined. So, what we have shown is the following that we take any set uh, in the uh, algebra generated by the semi algebra. So, that has got a representation in terms of the elements of the semi algebra. So, any element uh, E uh, in the algebra generated by the semi algebra can be represented as a finite disjoint union of elements in the semi algebra say C i. So, pick up any such representation and define mu tilde of E to be equal to sum of uh, mu's of this uh, p c c i sigma i equal to 1 to n. It does not matter which representation you choose, you will always get the same uh, sum. So, that means, mu tilde of E is well defined. So, now let us look at the next property namely that mu tilde which is defined on the algebra generated by the semi algebra is finitely additive. So, let us prove that property. So, we want to prove that mu tilde. So, mu tilde is finitely additive. So, to prove that what we have to show? So, let E be written as a union of E j s j equal to 1 to n, where each E j belongs to uh, the algebra generated by C and of course, E also belongs to the algebra generated by C. Right. So, we want to show to show that E uh, mu tilde of E is equal to summation j equal to 1 to n mu tilde of E j. So, this is what is to be shown. Now, uh, to show any such property, 
uh, we have to go back to the definition of mu tilde of any set. So, since E belongs E belongs to the algebra generated by C that implies uh, let us write each E j, E j belongs to the algebra. So, each E j can be written as a disjoint union of E uh, j and uh, say k, k equal to 1 to n j, where E j k belong to C for every j and k. So, every element E j is in the algebra generated by C. So, it must be a finite disjoint union of elements of C. So, that implies that the union E j j equal to 1 to n is equal to union j equal to 1 to n union k equal to 1 to n j of E j k. And this is my, so this is my our set E, E is equal to union. So, we have represented E as a finite disjoint union of elements of C. So, that implies that mu of E or uh, mu tilde of E, I can choose any representation. So, in particular this, so it is equal to summation j equal to 1 to n, summation k equal to 1 to n j of mu of E k j. And now, using the finite additive property of uh, uh, mu, we will write this. So, this is equal to uh, look at this sum. So, look at this sum okay. that is nothing but j equal to 1 to n mu tilde of E j. Right? That is by definition, because E j is a union of uh, E k j over k. So, by definition I can take that representation and write this is equal to this. So, that says mu tilde of E is equal to this. So, hence mu tilde is finitely additive. So, we have proved that mu tilde is finitely additive and uniqueness we have already shown. So, thus we have shown that a uh, measure which is defined on a semi algebra can be in a unique way extended to the algebra generated by it. And basically the idea is because every element um, uh, intuitively keep in your mind that mu of uh, uh, a set is the size. So, any element in the uh, semi algebra in the algebra generated by the semi algebra is a union of disjoint pieces in the semi algebra and size of each of them is known. So, the size of the union must be equal to sum of the sizes of uh, the individual pieces because they are disjoint. So, that was the idea and that helped us to extend a measure from a semi algebra to the algebra generated by it. So, that is the first step of the extension theory. So, as a consequence the length function can be extended uh, that we have already shown length function can be extended from the collection of all intervals to the collection of finite disjoint union of intervals that is the algebra generated by it. Right. So, now we will go to the next step of the extension. So, we will start with a measure which is defined on a algebra and we want to uh, try to extend it to the sigma algebra generated by it. So, the next step in the extension theory is going to be can uh, the length function for example, we would like to say can the length function be extended to all subsets of the real line. We have done it from uh, intervals to the algebra generated by intervals. Right? Uh, there is a theorem uh, by uh, a mathematician called S M Ulam and that theorem was proved in 1930. It says that under the assumption of continuum hypothesis, it is not possible to extend the notion of length to all subsets of real line. And this uh, is a very uh, important theorem. So, it uses uh, uh, two things namely one is what is called continuum hypothesis. Um, I will not go into the discussion of what is called continuum hypothesis at this stage. Uh, I would stress that one should read uh, about uh, this theorem 
from the text that we have just now mentioned an introduction to measure and integration. So, this is a very nice and important theorem which says as a consequence that it is not possible to extend the length function to all subsets of real line. So, the question comes if we cannot extend uh, uh, so in general uh, a given a measure uh, mu on an algebra of subsets of x we would like to extend it uh, to uh, a bigger class than a it cannot be done it for all subsets anyway but let us try to intuitively uh, uh, follow our idea of measuring the size of an object so intuitively given a measure mu on an algebra a a collection of subsets of a set a of a set x mu of a is the uh, size of the set a which you can measure and given an arbitrary set e one may not be able to measure its size exactly using the mu but we can at least try to approximate right so let us define what is called the outer measure induced by a measure so let us take mu an algebra of subsets of a set x uh, a an algebra of subsets of a set x and mu a measure defined on it for any subset e in x let us define what is called mu star of e so what is mu star of e what we do is given the set e so here is a set e you cover it by sets ai's in the algebra you cover it by the sets in the algebra okay take a covering of e by the sets ai's in the algebra and you know what is the size of the set ai so let us take the size of the set ai and add up all these sizes so what do you think this uh, sum will represent this sum will represent in some sense the approximate size of the set e of course it depends on the covering ai and now what we do is we take the infimum of all these approximate sizes that means we take the infimum of these numbers over all possible coverings of the set e and define that number as mu star of e and uh, we'll an try to analyze what are the properties of this uh, mu star of e so first of all uh, let us give it a name this mu star of e is called the outer measure induced by mu why the outer because we are covering e right by sets so these things cover e we are going maybe we are going outside e so this is outer and measure because we are trying to measure the size of this in terms of induced by mu because in terms of the known size is mu so once again let us recall and look at carefully what this mu star is given a set e arbitrary subset x in x cover it by elements ai whose size is you know so take a covering of e by elements in the algebra look at the sizes of ais add up all this that is the sum mu ai that is approximate size and take the infimum of all these approximate sizes so that we are going to call as the outer measure induced by so the first property we want to say is mu star is well defined well uh, what is the meaning of mu star is well defined so let us go back to the definition this is mu star is infimum of some numbers right and infimum of a subset of numbers exists in the real line if it is non empty and it should be bounded below of course all these numbers are going to be bounded below because uh, all are non negative numbers so it is bounded below by zero why is this non empty why is this collection non empty because a is an algebra so the whole space belong to it so keep in mind a is an algebra and in the definition of an algebra the whole space x is an element so e is covered by x itself so and x belongs to the algebra so at least there is one number in this collection over which you are taking infimums namely mu of x so it is a non empty collection of extended real numbers so its infimum always exists and hence mu is a well defined number 
Of course, it could be equal to plus infinity. Keep in mind the numbers here, they are all extended real numbers. So, this is this set is a collection of non negative extended real numbers and their infimum always exists and infimum could be equal to plus infinity. So, we have shown that mu tilde is uh, mu star the induced outer measure is well defined. The next property, so mu star is a well defined set function on the class of all subsets of the set x and we want to show some properties of it. So, the first property is mu star of empty set is equal to 0 and that is uh, true because empty set uh, belongs to the collection A in the algebra and mu star of uh, uh, there is equal to mu of A and that is equal to 0. And for any set that is a non uh, infimum of um, non negative numbers. So, this infimum has to be bigger than or equal to 0. So, that first property is obvious. Second property we want to check that mu star is monotone. So, let us check that mu star is a monotone function. So, let us take let A and B be subsets of X and A a subset of B to show mu star of A is less than or equal to mu star of B. Now, what is mu star of A? Uh, this is uh, in all these properties we are going to use um, uh, the definition of infimum critically. So, what is mu star of A? Mu star of A is defined as by our definition, it is the infimum over sigma mu of E i's say 1 to infinity, where this set A is contained in union of E i's disjoint union. And of course, E i's belong to the algebra, right. And what is mu star of B? that is the infimum i equal to 1 to infinity of mu of say f i s, where b is contained in union of f i s i equal to 1 to infinity a disjoint union, where f i s also belong to the algebra A. Now, note if A is given to be a subset of B, if A is subset of B and B is covered by a union j equal to you know, say f 1 to infinity, then that implies A is also inside. So, this is also inside f of j. So, what we are saying is every covering of B is also a covering of A. So, and this is the infimum over all possible coverings of B and this is the infimum over all possible coverings of A and every covering of B is also a covering of A. So, here we are taking infimum over a larger set and here we are looking at the infimum over a smaller collection of numbers and whenever you take infimum over a smaller collection of uh, numbers that is always bigger than or equal to infimum over a larger collection of numbers. So, that is a simple property about infimums. If you are taking an infimum of a larger collection, then that tends to be smaller than the infimum over a uh, smaller collection. So, that property implies that mu star of A has to be less than or equal to mu star of B. So, that is purely a property of the infimum over what collection you are taking. Every covering of B is also a covering of A. So, coverings of B form a subset of coverings of A and hence this property is true. So, that is the monotone property namely mu star is uh, monotone. Let us look at the next property namely mu star is countably subadditive. So, we want to prove mu star is countably subadditive. So, that means what to show? So, what we have to show that if A 
is a subset of x and a is contained in union of a i s. A is also a subset of x, then we want to show that mu of a is less than or equal to summation mu of a is. So, this is what is to be shown, right. Now, let us observe. So, note we want to show one number mu of a is less than or equal to some of these numbers. If one of these numbers is equal to plus infinity, then obviously, this property is true. So, note if mu of a i is plus infinity for some i, then clearly mu star of a is a number which is less than or equal to plus infinity, which is at least one of the mu a i. So, that is less than or equal to mu of uh, mu so, this is everything about star. So, it is mu star we are looking. So, let us just write mu star. We are trying to prove that mu star is countable. So, mu star of a i, i equal to 1 to infinity. So, what we are saying is this inequality is obvious if one of the terms in this sum is equal to plus infinity. So, let us take the case when all of them are finite. So, let us assume. So, suppose mu star of each a i is finite for every i. Now, what is mu star of a i? Mu star of a i is infimum of a certain collection. So, here we are going to use the property of something being infimum and that being finite. So, let epsilon greater than 0 be arbitrary, of course, fixed you choose arbitrarily and fix it. Then mu star of a i is the infimum over all summations approximate sizes. So, then there exists at least one covering. So, there exists sets say a i j, j equal to 1 to so on in uh, the algebra a such that this a i is contained in this disjoint union of a i j s. So, and mu star of a i which is infimum if to this I add the small number epsilon this becomes bigger than summation mu of a i j s j equal to 1 to infinity. So, this is uh, uh, let me uh, stress here this is uh, the kind of uh, uh, definition or this is the kind of analysis we will be coming across and uh, we will be uh, doing again and again. So, let us be very clear about this. We have got some number which is the infimum over some collection and if this infimum is finite, then the infimum plus a small quantity epsilon cannot be the infimum because that is on the right side of it. So, that cannot be the infimum of that collection right. Otherwise, alpha plus if alpha is the infimum then alpha plus epsilon will be the infimum which contradicts the definition of the infimum. So, if alpha is the infimum alpha plus the small number epsilon any small number epsilon cannot be the infimum that means what that means there must be a member of the collection over which you are taking infimum which so, so that alpha plus epsilon becomes bigger than that uh, uh, number in the collection over which you are taking infimum. So, that is what we are saying that if because mu star of a i is finite. So, given epsilon the infimum plus epsilon must be bigger than a member of the collection over which you are taking infimum. So, and what is the collection that is obtained by taking a covering a disjoint covering of um, a disjoint covering uh, uh, not only necessarily disjoint actually any covering we are taking. So, any covering and say such that this is true. So, given epsilon there exists a covering a i j j equal to 1 to infinity of a i say that mu star of a i plus epsilon is bigger than this and this happens for every i. 
So, if we add up, so add these equations over i. So, summation over i equal to 1 to infinity mu star of a i plus sigma alpha over i is bigger than sigma over i equal to 1 to infinity sigma over j equal to 1 to infinity mu of a i j. Right? And that is what we wanted mu star of a is bigger than something. We have got that kind of inequality. Now, the problem is this we are going to add epsilon infinite number of times. So, this will tend to become infinity and we do not want that. So, we go back and refine uh, our estimates. So, given epsilon bigger than 0, this we can do it for any epsilon. So, in particular whenever you are looking at for a i given epsilon there should exist a covering say that we will refine it, we will make it 2 to the power i. So, we will change our epsilon that is true for every epsilon. So, in particular it should be true for this. So, what we are saying is given epsilon there is a covering say that a i is covered by that collection and mu star of a i plus epsilon divided by 2 to the power i is bigger than the approximate size that is mu uh, summation mu of a i j. And this is for every i. Now, if I add here is epsilon 2 to the power 2 i. So, that means we have got this is now convergent. So, that means, so that implies that sigma i equal to 1 to infinity mu star of a i plus epsilon is bigger than this sum. And now, note if i and j both vary, so this is for every i. Okay. Now, if I take the union over i's, that will be union over this. So, I will get a covering of union a j's, which will be covered by this. right? And a is inside this. So, th what we are claiming is this is bigger than mu star of a, because a is contained in union over i union over j a i j's and this a i j's belong to C. So, a is covered by this countable union and this is one approximate size for mu of a. So, that is always bigger than or equal to mu star of a because that is a infimum. So, this quantity is uh, implies that this is always bigger than this. So, I can claim that mu star of summation is bigger than this quantity. Now, this epsilon is arbitrary that was fixed arbitrarily. So, I can let that go to infinity. So, one writes. So, now letting so letting epsilon go to 0, we have sigma mu star of a i i equal to 1 to infinity. This epsilon becomes 0 eventually. Now, I will write bigger than or equal to because in the limit it can become bigger than or equal to mu star of a and that shows. So, hence mu star is countably sub additive. So, that we have proved is countably sub additive. I just want to uh, go through the proof of this once again because uh, this is uh, um, an important uh, uh, kind of analysis we will be doing uh, again and again. So, let us just uh, revise the proof once again that mu star is countably sub additive. So, to show that mu star is countably sub additive, we have to show that if A is a subset of x and A is contained in union A i's, A i is contained in x, then I have to show that mu star of A is less than or equal to summation mu star of A i's. Now, to show this, the first observation which should, should keep in mind that whenever you are trying to show that one number is less than or equal to summation of a collection of numbers, then an obvious case may arise namely one of the numbers may be equal to plus infinity. So, if mu of a i is equal to plus infinity for some i, then clearly this side is equal to plus infinity and mu star of a is always less than or equal to plus infinity. So, we get mu star of a less than or equal to plus infinity and which is always less than this sum. So, that means that property is true. So, the obvious case is mu star when mu star of a i is finite for some i. 
So, what is the other possibility? Other is that mu star of um, a i is finite for every i. Now, here is the um, uh, main uh, construction part of the construction that we are going to use namely it is an infimum which is a real number. So, given epsilon bigger than 0 arbitrary we can find a covering a i j okay, of the set a i such that mu star of a i plus this small number and that small number will make it dependent on i the stage at which you are doing epsilon divided by 2 to the power i bigger than the approximate sizes over which you are uh, taking the infimum. So, once again the property of infimum being a real number is used here nothing more than that. So, once that is done you add both sides this is for every i take the summation on both sides. So, summation mu star of a i plus summation of this over i is less the, is bigger than summation of mu of a i j. Now, this is a convergent series its sum is equal to epsilon. So, this is mu star of a i summation plus epsilon and this the quantity on the right hand side is an approximate size of a that is this is bigger than or equal to mu star of a. Mu star of a is the infimum over all such numbers because a is covered by union over i union over j a i is covered by a i j s. So, union over a i s will be covered by this union and a is inside it. So, this is so this implies that summation mu star of uh, mu of a i j s summation over i and j is bigger than mu star of a and once that is uh, done that means that we have got and let go epsilon go to uh, 0. So, you get this quantity. So, that says that mu star is countably uh, sub additive. So, we let us so we have proved this property that mu star is countably sub additive. So, mu star now the only thing uh, left to be uh, shown is that um, that mu star actually is an extension otherwise all this process will be a waste. So, we want to claim that mu star is indeed an extension of mu. Mu star is not uh, countable additive, but at least we should check it is an extension and it is countably sub additive that we already checked. So, we want to check that mu star of a is equal to mu of a if a is uh, in a. So, to check that let us uh, look at the proper definition. So, we had mu of mu star of a is equal to infimum over summation mu of a i i equal to 1 to infinity where a is contained in union of a i is of and a i is belong to c uh, belong to the algebra a. Now, so if a belongs to the algebra then a is actually equal to a. So, a is contained inside a. So, this is one of the elements here in this covering a itself covers it. So, it will appear in one of it will be one of the elements over which you are going to take the infimum. So, that implies that mu star of a which is the infimum is less than or equal to mu of a right. So, that property is by the sheer fact that a is covered by itself and a is in the algebra. So, that is we want to prove other way around inequality to show that mu of a is less than or equal to mu star of a. Now, once again we want to show that one number is less than the other number. So, there is an obvious possibility case 1 that mu star of a is equal to plus infinity. So, in that case this is plus infinity and mu star mu of uh, a is always less than or equal to plus infinity which is equal to mu star of a. So, that is obvious. So, the obvious case is when mu star of a is equal to uh, plus infinity. So, let us look at case 2 mu star of a is finite. 
So, in that case again we are going to use the definition of infimum. So, mu star of a is the infimum of all possible approximate sizes summation so on. So, let epsilon greater than 0 be arbitrary. Then there exists a covering. So, there exists sets a j s belonging to the algebra such that a is contained in the disjoint union of a j s and the infimum says that mu star of a plus epsilon cannot be the infimum that has to be bigger than summation mu of a j s. So, there is at least one such covering possible. So, that uh, this is infinity, this is not necessarily disjoint. We can make it, we will show you, see it later on. So, this is finite. Okay. Now, note A is contained in union of A j s and all of them are elements in the algebra. We have assumed A is in the algebra. So, everything is in the algebra. So, and mu is a measure and we showed every measure implies mu is countably sub additive and that implies that mu of a is less than or equal to summation mu of a j is j equal to 1 to infinity. So, look at this equation 1, look at this equation 2. So, what does 1 and 2 apply? Mu star of a plus epsilon is bigger than this sum and that sum is bigger than mu of a. So, 1 and 2 imply that mu star of a is bigger than uh, mu star of a plus epsilon. So, plus mu star of a plus epsilon is bigger than mu of a and epsilon is arbitrary. So, let epsilon go to 0 and that implies that mu star of a is bigger than or equal to mu of a. So, that proves the other way around inequality uh, also in the case when mu star of. So, once again mu star of a is less than or equal to mu of a because a is one of the members uh, in which is covering it. So, mu of, of a is element. So, mu of a is uh, mu star of a is the infimum. So, that is less than or equal to that is obvious property. Okay. And uh, to show that uh, the case when it is finite mu star of a is finite, we look at once again the definition given epsilon bigger than 0, there is a covering. So, that this holds the infimum plus epsilon is bigger than one of the elements over which you are taking the covering. And now, using the fact that mu is countable is subadditive, this is bigger than or equal to mu of a and hence that proves the required property. So, what we have shown is that the mu star is indeed an extension of uh, uh, mu of uh, a. So, let us uh, go back and uh, have a look at what we have done is the following. We started with a measure mu on the algebra a, measure means it is mu of empty set is equal to 0 and mu is countably additive. We are trying to extend it. So, we try to find out the size of any set by looking at sizes of sets in A. So, take any set E, cover it by elements in the algebra A and look at the sizes of mu, call it as mu of A i. right? So, take the summation. So, this gives an approximate size of the set E. Look at the smallest possible of these numbers, call it the infimum. So, mu star of E, the induced outer measure is defined as the infimum over all these summations and these summations arise from coverings of E. So, this is called the outer measure and we showed it is well defined. We showed it is uh, it has the obvious property namely mu of empty set is equal to 0, mu star of A is bigger than or equal to 0. It is uh, monotone and so that means mu star of A is less than or equal to mu of B and mu star is countably subadditive and finally, it is an extension. So, uh, one let me uh, point it out that we have taken mu star of a as the infimum over 
those summations uh, and uh, we have taken the coverings which are countable in number. One can ask the question, can't we take only finite uh, coverings uh, instead of countable coverings of it? So, let us give an example to show that that is not possible uh, to do that, the finite coverings will not suffice. So, let us look at the set E, we can, the case is the real line, we will look at the set E which is rationals intersection with 0 to 1. So, we are looking at all the rationals in the uh, set uh, in the interval 0 1. Um, clearly, lambda star of E, uh, we expect it to be equal to 0. Why we expect size of this? Because uh, is a countable set and the length of each singleton is equal to 0. So, we expect the length of each uh, when added together, this also should remain small or lambda star of E is equal to 0, right. This is quite natural. Now, suppose we define. So, this is when lambda star is defined by taking countable coverings. Now, let us take uh, a finite covering of E by interval. So, E is covered by finite number of intervals union E i. We claim that in that case, this number the approximate size of E will always be bigger than or equal to 1, because of the following reason. What is E? E is rationals inside 0 1 and suppose E is covered by union I j is j equal to 1 to n. right? So, if possible let sigma lambda of i j j equal to 1 to n be less than or equal to 1. Now, these are finite uh, is a finite collection of. Uh, so, here is 0, here is 1 and i j s are intervals of course, uh, intervals in 0 1 which are covering. So, i j s are in 0 1 which are covering the set E which is rationals in 0 1. So, now, so let us say that i j say uh, for the sake of just definition is this it is a j b j. Okay? It does not matter whether open or closed, you can just assume to be open, it does not matter much actually. Then we have got these numbers between a j's and b j's. So, look at all the left end points and look at the smallest of them. Let us say the smallest is here that is a. So, what is a? a is the smallest of the numbers a 1, a 2, a n and b j look at the largest of b j's and call that as b. Then this a b okay, is equal to left may be closed does not matter is equal to union of i j's okay, or at least it will cover the union of i j's j equal to 1 to n and they cover e. Okay. Now, so and that covers E and now if this is uh, less than or equal to uh, this is the smallest and that is the uh, uh, largest ones which is covering. Now, this number A, okay, so that means what? That means B minus A is less than or equal to summation length of I j is j equal to 1 to n. Okay. And if that is less than or equal to 1, that means B minus A is uh, strictly less than 1. That means, it has to be like this, but then there is a rational here between 0 and 1, which belongs to E and E is inside A B. So, that is not possible. So, that will be a contradiction. So, this, so this situation is not possible. That means, whenever these are covering, we have to have lambda of I i is bigger than or equal to 1. But that means all approximate sizes of uh, E is bigger than one, so that will imply uh, uh, that uh, lambda star of E is bigger than or equal to one. Uh, that means, but that is uh, not possible because we just now said lambda star of E should be equal to zero. So in the definition of the outer measure, uh, we cannot uh, limit ourselves to only uh, finite coverings. Uh, we we have to allow all countable coverings also. So, today we have uh, tried to uh, go beyond uh, uh, an algebra. So, we started with uh, a semi algebra and a measure on it, we extended it 
to a measure on the algebra generated by it as a first step. As a next step, we started with a measure on an algebra and we showed that by an example so on the real line Ulam's theorem that you cannot extend it to all subsets of real line. So, let us try to go as much as far as possible. So, we define given a measure mu on an algebra, we defined the notion of an outer measure for any subset uh, A uh, of that set X and um, we showed this outer measure has some nice properties. It extends one the given measure, it is uh, monotone which is countably sub additive. So, in the next lecture we will see how to get from it an actual extension which is a measure. Thank you.